What's going on YouTube? Today is May 6th. Current situation, trying to go to Coffee and Cars with an owner of an AMG GTS. On the way back, I'm gonna talk about it, drive it, have some fun with it. Taking my car, which as you can see is behind Tristan's car. So now I'm late and I can't get my car out. This is an ongoing situation at our house like every week. So whenever he does come downstairs, he can move this, I'll get my car out. Go meet up with the GTS owner, go out to Coffee and Cars, take some clips, some cars there and review the GTS on the way back. the price you pay for driving these kind of cars behind more cars like these. <laughs> Did that happen this morning? Just now, like, like the R8. Damn. Where we got those wide ass tires, just shot one up, man. All right, guys, so before I start the review on the GTS and stuff, I'm gonna kind of show y'all some highlights from the show, some cars that I think are cool. Directly red GT is a very rare car, but. Ferrari F40, by far my favorite car here. They were like the first, right? Yeah. First hyper cars, I guess. Like the first time, there was a super expensive, ridiculously fast. Besides the Porsche 959, the F40 is like, in my opinion, the first of the hyper cars before the Bugatti and all those started coming out. Okay, so after reviewing like one of the clips on the camera, I heard this like whining noise. I'm not sure what it was, but I don't hear it now. Hopefully this doesn't fuck my video. So this is a little bit different, but switch cars have the GTS now. I will go over like the interior and do an edit of it and stuff later. But right now, I'm just gonna jump into me driving it because I'm gonna drive it home from Coffee and Cars, get a feel for it. Um, never driven one of these cars. Driven the SLS, but I've never driven the GTS. Uh, especially not a tuned one. This one's running like 600 wheel horsepower, 650 torque. Should be very interesting. So I guess we're gonna find out. All right, so. The owner of the car has told me that it's pretty much a tune and some other upgrades, but as far as the exhaust goes, it's just downpipes. The rest of the exhaust is totally stock. I don't know if I believe that though, because this car is insanely loud. This car may actually be louder than my GT3, which is hard to do. The higher end cars in Mercedes lineup, no matter if you get an AMG or a base one or whatever, they're always gonna hold just super, super high build quality. This car is no different. So carbon fiber everywhere, black and red interior, which Obviously, you know, it's like my favorite color combination, red interior as a whole. Besides the really bright blues on the Bugattis and stuff, red interior is definitely my favorite. Um, I fit, which is always a big if on cars like this. Listen to the noise. It definitely kind of takes your breath away a little bit when you really get on it. I already really like this car. As far as like the feeling of driving the car, I know some of you aren't gonna like this, but I compare it kind of similar to the Corvette. It's a very, very long front end and you and the rest of the cockpit are sitting relatively pretty close to the back. Completely opposite from my 911, but it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get used to. I said in the review of my car last week that Porsche does a very good job kind of simplifying everything and putting it right where you think it would be. Mercedes does the opposite of that. They like to put a shitload of buttons kind of everywhere and make the cockpit look like some kind of fighter jet, which is cool, once you get used to it, it's fine. Uh, but a little bit overwhelming when you first step in. It took me a second just to figure out how to turn the AC on. The paddles in this car I have the same issue with as the CLA. It just, it feels like a button. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're super responsive. I just, I like when I pull a paddle to like feel something mechanical happening. Every turbo car is gonna have a little bit of lag, but it's pretty immediate in this thing. When I want power, it goes. Exterior wise, I like the look. You either love it or you hate it with these cars. You know, the really long front end and the short back, um, the Viper, the Corvette, the F-Type. There's quite a few cars that have that formula. 
Um, and you either love all of them or you kind of hate all of them. I personally like the look. Some angles, it reminds me of a shoe, but um, other angles, it just looks incredible. And, and the whole Stormtrooper thing going on with this one, you know, black wheels, white paint, carbon fiber on it. Um, it just looks super, super aggressive. <laughs> I'm about to run my GT3 real quick. Because why not? Back to what I was saying a second ago before I just got all sidetracked by uh, non-illegal street racing in Mexico. If I had one gripe about this car, one, it's how small the front windshield is. Like, I can barely see out the front windshield. Um, it's just a very, very low roof line on a very high profile hood. Um, so you just don't get a whole lot of space to look out windows. The blind spots are pretty bad, but Mercedes has all kind of blind spot assist and stuff built in, so you shouldn't slam into the car next to you. The other thing I don't like, there's so many buttons down here, and then Mercedes went ahead and put a bunch of buttons up here. Um, like the seat heaters, the wing up, and that kind of stuff is up here. Some cars can get away with that. The new Raptors have the switches up here, like the auxiliary switches. In a Mercedes, I'm not a fan of it. It makes me think of like a rally truck or an 18-wheeler or something. Um, I, I just... It's a small thing. I know I probably sound like an idiot complaining about that. And if that's my only real gripe with this car, I mean... This is pretty close to perfection, honestly. I know that was like a little bit of an informal review, uh, but that was just kind of the way the day worked out. The guy hit me up, he's like, hey, let's go to Coffee and Cars if you want to review my car on the way back. And it's kind of fun to do it this way and uh, hang out with the owner. If you guys want to see a review on that R8 or the GTR, let me know, I can definitely line that up. Um, yeah, GTS, personally, I love it. I would say for that like 120 to 140 range, that's definitely probably my new favorite car. Um, the 911's obviously like my baby and that thing is supposed to fight with the 911. But I'm not a huge fan of the 911s until you get up above that like 140 range. Um, the GT3, Turbo, Turbo S are like my favorites. Everything under them, even though they're great cars, they're just a little bit more tame than I'd like. And that GTS for the same price as like something like a Targa or a GTS, I definitely take GTS Carrera. I definitely take the AMG GTS over that. I'm also a little bit of an AMG fanboy, so hopefully that's not showing too bad. Um, love the car, love the setup on it, love the color, everything about it definitely give my thumbs up on that car. Not gonna end the video yet. I haven't had coffee all day and I can't end the video without coffee. We're gonna go get some Starbucks in the Raptor. We're driving all kinds of shit today. And then we're gonna go shoot some basketball because... Nope. Damn it, it's bounced on the street. Ball is life, right? That's just how it, I've been playing basketball a decent amount at Lifetime because it's fun. And uh, I'm getting there, I'm getting my... I used to be really good and now I'm kind of shit and uh, I'm gonna be good again someday, so. If you try hard, kids, you can do anything you want. All right, now I'm wrapping up this video. 
I got my secret stuff. Your secret stuff. Ready to play some basketball. Um, whoop Taylor's ass like always. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of the GTS, maybe what cars you want to see in the future, and catch you guys in the next one. Is the ball down by your feet? It's right there in the back. I'm blind. Yeah. See ya. Thank you.